Welcome to Electron Line. Now it's time to start looking at the internal forces on a truss. And here we have a simple truss, so it should not be that hard to figure this out. We have the four joints, one, two, three, and four. And we have the five members. Also notice that the angles that the members make are very important. Those translate into the diagrams where we draw our forces. Those angles do indicate the direction of the forces. Because remember that all the forces are either compression forces or tension forces and those forces are therefore directed along the length of the members. Remember that we put a load on here so we know that this joint has a force in this direction, force of the load. That force will translate to this member right here, it will pull down on the member in this direction and this member will pull down on the joint this way right here. Those forces, the load, then translates onto the member, translates onto the joint. We know that this member now must be under tension because it's being pulled in this direction. And since this member pulls on this joint, the joint pulls back on the member this way. You can see that this member is now under tension, which means that this member pulls on this joint, pulling it upward, so there's a force in this direction. Next, we know that these two beams are under compression. They're being pushed together like this. So we have a force going this way, a force in this direction, a force in this direction, and a force in this direction. It is the compression forces on these two beams that keeps the joint from moving downward, which means that the beams push back against the joint in this direction and in this direction. So it's these two forces that are preventing the joint from moving downward. Next, we look at the bottom right here. Since this is under compression, let me move this joint over a little bit further so it's kind of lined up. So let's move it over this So way. this beam is under compression, which means it pushes back against this joint right here. So we have a force in this direction. And we know that, the, that this joint is also being held up by the support on B right here. So we have a, a support force in this direction. That's force at B. We know that there we have a force at B holding it up. Here, the same direction, this is under compression, so we know that this beam is pushing against this joint in this direction, and we know that it upholds a force at some angle, let's say call this force at A, and then if we subdivide this force into the vertical and horizontal components, we know that we have a vertical component right here, which is the force at A in the Y direction, and we have a force pushing this way, force at B in the X direction. Notice that we have forces of these two beams pushing against the joints in that direction, which places these two beams under tension. These two members right here prevent these two joints from moving outward, which means that this, this beam pulls on this joint in this direction, and this beam pulls on this joint in this direction, which places these two beams under tension, like this, and like this. And if these two beams are under tension, that means they're being pulled by this joint in this direction and pulling, being pulled in this joint by this direction, which means that these two members pull on this joint and therefore they feel a force in that direction and a force in that direction. And now I think we have identified all of the various forces on each joint and on each member of this particular truss. That's an example of how we go through a truss to determine the direction of all the forces. The next step would be to go ahead and take a look at each one of these joints and determine the total sum of the forces knowing that the sum of the forces in both the x and the y direction must add up to zero. As a simple example, let's take a look at these three forces right here. If we know the angle phi, we then know that this force B will act in this direction. That's a support force at B. We also know that we have a force right here pulling from the joint because of this member right here, and then we have a force in this direction. Notice by knowing the angles, because the angles must be true, we know that we can then find the relative size of these forces. You can see that this force must be at least this big relative to this force, and this force must be this big in this direction. And this angle right here would be the same as this angle right here. So this is the angle phi. Once we know the angle phi from the physical structure and we know the size of this force, we can determine the other two forces. And that's how we slowly will work our way through each of the joints to determine the forces at each of the joints. So that's the general methodology that we're going to follow. Now that we have the general pattern, 
we can determine which of the beams, which of the members are under tension, which of the members are under compression. We can see what all the forces are at each of the joints. Now we need to find the magnitude of those forces depending upon the relative sum, the vectorial sum at each of the joints, knowing that the forces are in equilibrium, that all the forces in the x direction, all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. Therefore, we can draw them as triangles or as rectangles to determine the actual magnitude of the forces on each of the joints. And that's how it's done.